Hello everybody and thanks for checking out this video which is all about slip jigs and how to play them on your Baron. Now I'm adding slip jigs to my mix of videos here on YouTube alongside my jig video, my reel video and hornpipe video as they're one of the more common traditional dance patterns that you might come across in Irish music and also Scottish and English folk music. Slip jigs have their own distinctive rhythmic characteristics that differentiate them from all of the other patterns. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through a handful of my favorite slip jig patterns and give you some top tips for playing slip jigs really, really effectively. Now you might also find it helpful to check out my other videos on Bayron. I've got a video on the foundations or the basics and another one on reel, another one on jigs, another on home pipes. And if you're finding them helpful, you can hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to get bumped when other videos come out. I've also got a documentary on my channel called Hidden Drummers of Aram, which you might be interested in checking out. And I'm working on the final stages of finishing Hidden Drummers of India at the moment, which I'm looking forward to sharing with you all really, really soon. Now, there are so, so many ways to play this awesome instrument. And in this series, I'm just sharing my own approach to playing the Baron and what's worked for me and certainly what's worked for my students in the past. Now, one of the things that I really love about this instrument is that everyone has a different approach and all my favorite players are entirely different. Listen to as many different players as you can and learn from them. And in time, you'll find your own path and your own voice with this instrument. Also, do leave me a comment down below on how you're getting on with your Baron playing. I love to hear from you guys and I get a real buzz from hearing about how you're getting on with the instrument and answering any questions you might have. I always try and give helpful answers to questions as they pop up. So yeah, do just give me a shout. For now, it's all about slip jigs. So grab a beverage of choice and grab your bear on and let's go for it. So what actually is a slip jig? So a slip jig is a step dance and almost like an older sibling to the jig. Jigs have six quick beats that go round and round, which are usually counted in two groups of three. We call this a compound time as it's easier to count two groups of three as opposed to six very quick beats. But what's the difference between a jig and a slip jig? Well, a slip jig has nine quick beats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And it's also a compound time, which means we can count it in three groups of three. So one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three. We're gonna get this going in the voice first, as language and vocalization, in my opinion, it's the most effective way to learn rhythm. In fact, in certain cultures, rhythm has its own language. Probably the most brilliant example of this is Kanakol from the South Indian Carnatic tradition, classical music. A great exercise to get us going is to grab your metronome and practice counting three beats per click. Let's set it first to 60 BPM and count one round of nine and then one round of three, just like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three. Now for jigs, the golden word that I use for teaching the vocalization for the rhythm is galloping. A regular jig will have two gallopings next to each other. Galloping, galloping. And a slip jig will have three. Galloping, galloping, galloping. If you can say galloping comfortably to the music, it's almost certainly going to be a jig of some sort. Now, of course, galloping has three syllables. So for the slip jig, we can say galloping three times in each bar or each round of the pattern. Galloping, galloping, galloping. Now, if you are a music reader, which can be helpful, but is absolutely not essential, slip jigs are a nine, eight time in contrast to jigs, which are in 6-8 time. So the first pattern that I'm gonna show you is a really good foundation or first port of call when learning about slip jigs and how to play them. We're gonna start with the left hand in the bass position where the whole 
of the tonal hand is inside the drum. With the right hand, we're going to play down, up, down, down, up, down, flat stroke. This is going to be the sticking. Down, up, down, down, up, down, flat. And the flat stroke is just where we tap in and out as opposed to down and up. Yeah? Little flat stroke. A flat stroke is similar to a down stroke, but the movement is more in and out. And sometimes it's easier to think of it as just a regular down, but as we develop our technique, we want to try and differentiate between the different strokes, as they all have different sound qualities. Let's first vocalize this pattern by saying the words galloping, galloping, tap. The first galloping, down, up, down, galloping. Three syllables, three strokes. The second galloping is exactly the same, galloping. And the tap is just that lovely little flat stroke on the third beat. Now for the tap, I want you to slide the tonal hand up inside the drum and see if you can play the tap stroke above the hand in that little kind of pop zone that we spoke about in one of my previous videos. This will give you a higher pitch, but not a full-blown pop sound as we've looked at in those previous videos. It's just like a little inflection to give the groove a lift at the end of each bar. Start really slow with your practice. Let's take 65 BPM on the metronome and just say the words first. Galloping, galloping, tap. Galloping, galloping, tap. Galloping, galloping, tap. Galloping, galloping, tap. Once you said it with the metronome, I want you to say it and play it. Now, when you feel confident with the pattern, take the words out. When you feel comfortable with the speed, notch it up four or five BPM on the metronome. We'll jump it up to 70 BPM. Now we're going to bring in that movement in the left hand. So our left hand is going to slide up for the tap. Yeah? So, here we go. Now, really good to practice with some real musical examples as well. I've got my practice playlist on Spotify. You can check that out in the description if you would like some really nice tracks to play along with. One, two, three, one, two, three. Galloping, galloping, tap, galloping, galloping, tap. Now the next pattern that we're going to have a look at leads on really nicely from the first. And after that flat stroke we had on the third beat in the first pattern, we're going to fill in the gaps and add in an extra up down. So instead of saying galloping, galloping, tap, we're going to say galloping, galloping, galloping. So we're filling in all the gaps. We still want to keep that nice 
high pitch sound on the third beat. So do try and keep the tonal hand moving up inside the drum and the right hand playing up in that pop zone right up at the very top uh, so that we get that nice high pitched sound. And make sure on that third beat that we also keep that nice little flat stroke and that will give you a lovely little variation in the sound. Now altogether that's going to look and sound a little bit like this. Now, as an addition to that, we're gonna add a muted open sound on the first beat of this pattern, the first galloping. And that muted open sound is where the drum is resting alongside the body and inside the drum, the tonal hand lifts. The tip of the thumb rests against the skin, top of the hand resting on the shell of the drum. So the only points of contact between you and the drum will be, of course, the leg on which the drum is sitting the side of the body which is muting the drum from the front, the tip of your thumb. So we get a really nice tonal sound that isn't too ringy. I actually quite like that sound, but it's probably a little bit too much resonance for a groove like this. So we're gonna keep it nice and muted for the first beat. Moving in towards the bass sound for the second. And then for the third, that lovely little uh, higher pitched sound uh, on the third beat. So we have open, bass, bass, high, open, bass, high, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three. And that is our third pattern. Now again, we're gonna practice this pattern with the metronome first. So I've got it going at 60 BPM and we're going to say the words galloping, 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 galloping. Once you said the words with the metronome, say it and play it. Ready, steady, go. Galloping, 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 galloping. Then once that's really super steady, you can give your voice a rest, but keep saying the words in your head. If you can say it, I guarantee you, you will be able to play it. Now, of course, once you've practiced it at lots of different tempi on your metronome, absolutely go for it and play along with some real musical examples. Galloping, 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 down, 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 down. And the next pattern that we're gonna have a look at is a little bit longer and has more rhythmic variation. In fact, it's four bars long and each bar is just one whole count 
of three or one whole count of nine if you're counting in the quick beat. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three. At the moment, with the first two grooves, we have been putting the emphasis on the third beat of the pattern. Now, in bar one of this new groove, groove number three, we will keep this the same. So bar one is just the same as groove two. Now, on the second bar of this groove, we're gonna change it up a little bit. So the first beat of this second bar is gonna start with an open sound. The second beat is going to be a high sound. And then on the third beat, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna get the heel of the hand on the tonal hand, and we're just gonna press the heel of the hand into the skin and just let the fingers roll off the skin. So just to run through those three beats, first beat, on an open sound, second beat on the high, and then third, we'll have that nice uh, heel of the hand just pressing into the skin. So we get like a bass sound, but it's a variation of the bass sound. It's kind of like a little bit of a higher pitched bass sound. So if we think our bass sound, when we press the heel of the hand in gently, we can get a little bit of a higher pitch in it. So quite a nice little technique to use to get different pitches. get kind of a nice little pitch variation in your grooves. So all together, that second bar is gonna sound like this. Now the third bar of this groove is gonna be the same as the first. So first bar, second bar, third bar, done. Fourth bar, we're gonna add in an ornament. And this ornament is gonna be tikatata. Tikatata is just gonna be forward and back. Tikatata. Forward, back, forward, back. Tikatata. Now it's almost a little bit like that flat scope that we looked at in one of my last videos and then again in this video. But we're thinking, or at least I think of this, as almost forward and back. So if I was painting a brush stroke along the skin of my baron, it would be a straight line, as opposed to down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, which would be kind of, you know, a big rainbow style kind of <laughs> shape. Forward, back. And the rhythm is tikatata. So this whole bar is going to be ticka ta ta galloping tap. So ticka ta ta from back from back galloping down up down tap flat stroke. Ticka ta ta galloping tap. So the whole pattern four bars goes open bass high open bass push the heel open bass tap ticka ta ta galloping all on that higher pitch. So we're playing above the left hand at the top of the drum to get that nice kind of clear, uh, slightly more icy sound, yeah? So a four bar pattern, we'll go through it a couple of times really slowly and I'll try and say as many of the words as I possibly can. So. Open, bass. So it's a really, really good idea to practice each bar separately in this groove pattern. Do it with the metronome 60 BPM, a really good speed to start at. Of course, 60 BPM is just one second. Yeah, it's the same as a second ticking on a clock. So it sits very comfortably in the brain and in the body. We're familiar with this. So all together, the whole pattern, all four bars goes like this. One, two, three. So do practice it with your metronome, 60 BPM, great speed to start, and then why not notch it up? 80 BPM.
Now at the beginning, you might find that you have to concentrate really hard on that ornament. And like triplets, they're actually a little bit more difficult to play slowly. Look for clarity and control and don't be too tempted to rush through the technique. Well, of course you can rush through it, but make sure you do come back to it at some point and practice it at a steady tempi, just to make sure that the alignment and the technique is entirely waterproof. So of course, once you've practiced with the metronome, you've got used to the groove, get some live musical examples, practice along to them. It's really, really good to put all of these patterns into context and play along with some real music. One, two, three, one, two, three. Galloping, galloping, galloping. Ready, steady, go. Now this next pattern is one of my favorite for slip jig grooves. Though it needs to be used a little bit carefully as to not rock the boat too much in a more traditional session. We are gonna use hemiola, or different rhythm grouping for the first two rounds of three in the slip jig. Instead of having one, two, three, one, two, three, it's gonna become one, two, one, two, one, two. And that's really what hemiola is. It's two groups of three beats, being replaced by three groups of two. So one, two, three, four, five, six becomes one, two, one, two, one, two. Of course, that's only on the first two beats of our slip jig. On the third beat of the slip jig, it's gonna be three beats as normal. So one, two, one, two, one, two, galloping. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. Now we're gonna use the word coffee three times to replace the two gallopings. So all together, the pattern goes like this. Coffee, 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 galloping. Coffee, 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 galloping. And to make sure that we check that we're still in the slip jig time signature, we're gonna count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we are still within that nine beats, but we're just grouping them differently. So. Coffee is gonna be played as a down up. So coffee, coffee, down up. Got three of them. Down up, down up, down up. That's followed of course by the galloping, which we're just gonna play as a regular down up, down. Now we just gotta be a little bit careful when we jump back to the beginning of this groove because we're gonna have a double down. So it's gonna go coffee. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try say it with the metronome. We're gonna say three um, gallopings followed by coffee, 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 galloping. And let's get the metronome to say 80 BPM. Good speed to start. So we're gonna go galloping, 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 coffee, 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 galloping, 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 coffee, 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 galloping, 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 coffee, 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 galloping. So you should be able to see how this fits within the grid for the slip jig pattern. Now this syncopated slip jig pattern works really nicely when it's played back to back with that more straight galloping, galloping, galloping pattern. So just like we've practiced it, saying it with the metronome, we're gonna do the same thing when we're playing. We're gonna do a round of straight slip jig pattern followed by that coffee, 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 galloping, that syncopated hemiola pattern. So we'll do that with the metronome again. We'll get it going at 80 BPM. And 
and do practice that one even slower if that feels more comfortable. There is absolutely no shame in slow and steady practice. By practicing things slowly, it means that we're throwing that information at the brain slower. It's more likely to stick so that next time when you come back, it'll be there, ready to go, ready to get stronger, ready to build. It's all about getting the foundations really, really strong first. So we're gonna add in some tonal hand movement for this. So for the first round, galloping, galloping, galloping. We're just gonna do the same thing as the second groove that I showed you, the second pattern earlier in this video. So, galloping, galloping, gallop. So that was open, face, And then of course for the coffee, 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 galloping. We're gonna do uh, that movement that I showed you in the last groove where we push in with the heel of the hand. It's gonna go coffee, 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 galloping. And then that high pitched sound on the third beat of the slip jig. So it's gonna go open, bass, high, coffee, 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 galloping, open, bass, high, coffee, 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 galloping, open, bass, high, coffee, 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 galloping. So of course it's a really good idea to practice this pattern with some nice real musical examples, yeah? One, two, three, one, two, three. Ready, steady, go. So I hope you enjoyed learning about slip jigs in this video. And if you did, you can give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more Baron percussion music making videos coming your way really soon. If you have any questions or comments or concerns about anything that I've said or done in this video, please do leave them in the comments down below. Or you can get in touch with me through my website as well, ruryglashing.net. Thank you so much for watching this video and hopefully see you all in the next video. And until then, Stay well, stay healthy, and keep drumming. Take care, everybody. Bye.